hoping that this smoke is just what Chris put in the cylinders, but it smells like oil. Well, it runs. That there was also a bunch of two-stroke oil, two-stroke gas in that line, and in that carburetor. Yeah, but I recognize that smell. That's uh, that's thirty weight, and that's not two-stroke gas. Well, and plus it's set for a while too. You think you might need the piston rings to come back in? Yeah. The oil looked really good. See how clean it is. So what do you think? Run it for a couple of minutes and see what happens and then change the oil? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Check it.
puking a bunch of white smoke out and when people see white smoke they think oh god it's burning oil it's blown up no it's been sitting for a while and the rings have gotten a little stuck to the pistons and you know heat and a low can of sea foam helps lube up the upper cylinders and gets everything nice and lubricated again now that I know it runs, the fuel pump is pumping, the carburetor works, it sucks gas out of the gas, this gas tank. Now the only thing we gotta know is if it'll move. So what's next? Pull this tank off and see if it's clean or because uh, we're not gonna drag this around. Now, uh, what we can do is um, I can get a couple of cinder blocks and we just put it up on a couple of cinder blocks. Or jack stands. I'd rather use cinder blocks or the back wheels just need to be up off the ground, that's it. Just a couple of cinder blocks, something just to get the back wheels up and see if she moves forward and backwards. We'll do that right now. Yep, and we still need to figure out if it's the key switch or the solenoid that's keeping it from I actually cranking. I'll bet it's the solenoid, as crusty as that dude is. Yeah, it's gonna be that solenoid. But now we're gonna have a nice victory drink. It's a Gatorade. Not sponsored, by the way. I just love Gatorade. All right, we're gonna put a jump cut in here. We're going to go ahead and swap that solenoid out too. We'll get everything set back up and we'll be back. Okay, fast forward, oh, two days. Yeah. Um, we poured about a quarter cup of fuel into the gas tank and it started leaking. So, it looks like the little petcock on the bottom uh, has a little gasket that has gotten roached out and uh, didn't want to seal anymore and the petcock itself was frozen so ordered a replacement on Amazon as you do so that's in but in the meantime we did replace the solenoid it was a uh, pretty crusty especially these bottom two terminals so uh, yeah try to start it with the key Nice. So, next step, the, uh, the seal and the petcock on the bottom of the fuel tank. So, that'll obviously involve us taking it off and we'll get to get a closer look at it. Bring it over here. Let's see what we got. Turn that dude over. That may still have some fuel in it. Yeah, I think it does. Go ahead and slosh it around. Yeah, slosh that around and then uh, dump it out over in the recycling pail. Greta, don't watch. Don't watch Greta. Sorry. We're returning it back to the earth. It came from the earth, right? Yes. Yeah. It's fine. 
doesn't need a lot. Yeah, that ain't gonna fit. That's what she said. <laughs> Not to me, she didn't. Oh, that works. What, the cap is fuel tight? No, the vent on the of the tank works. Oh, is it whistling? Yeah, it was. Well, that's good. Yeah. Air vent lets out fuel, too. Imagine that. That also means that when the weather gets cold, it'll draw in moisture especially if there's ethanol based fuel in it so another reason why not to run that crap Yep. because the alcohol ethanol in the fuel will attract water out of the air if you live in a particularly dry climate that might not be an issue but in most places it is we totally learned all this stuff on the internet too Project Farm did a good uh, a good deal on ethanol fuel versus non-ethanol fuel, both with and without fuel stabilizers. And if memory serves me right, he showed that the best thing was non-ethanol fuel without a stabilizer. Mm -hmm. To the workbench. Luke, give everyone a close up of that petcock on the bottom of that tank. We have to replace this rubber part, and we're replacing this because. Yeah, it's. I can't turn it. It's crusty. Does that unthread out of there, or does it just yank out of there? It just pulls out. That's what she said. Since we have a couple of these, we'll show everyone what we're dealing with. All right here's the little petcock. Just the the barb, the big barb then goes up in the tank for your fuel line here. That's obvious. And here's the uh, the rubber seal that goes on it. Rusty. Crustoleum. Oh yeah. Yeah. That yeah. dog ain't gonna hunt. Um, do you want to put a little lube on that? Because you never go in dry. He's going in dry, folks. You saw it here first. And we're in. I close that off, put a little bit of fuel in, and see if she leaks. She shouldn't leak. Yeah, we'll be right back. Shut off. Yeah. Okay. And as you can see, no dripping. Well, they can't because you're holding the tank out of the shot. Well, you should have pointed the camera up. Nah, too much work. And it's not dripping at all. Uh, get nah. your get your fuel bottle and open the petcock and see if it'll drain back. Tilt the tank a little bit towards the. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Shut it off midstream. Pinch it. There we go. Yep. Well. It works. Works better than what was on there, so we're going to run it.
Oh. Are we still filming? Yep. And don't be a fool. Change your hose. I don't think that's how that goes, but yeah, it works. I think it's supposed to be don't be a wank, fill your tank. Yeah. That one? Yeah. Guys, installation is the exact opposite of uninstallation. So we will bring you back to the action once we are done reinstalling the tank. Yeah, look at that dude. Pretty nasty. Fuel hoses are stiff too. Fuel tank is on. Oh, you got these. Yeah. Um, made in Israel. That's pretty neat. I didn't know the Israelis were making stuff like that and exporting it. Cool. Are we filming? Yes, we are. Okay. And if you notice on the filter, there's a tiny little arrow there. That's which way the fuel has to go. Boop. Yeah. We're going to stick that on with a couple new lengths of hose, which we already have laying down over here. We were using as a temporary measure for the the VP racing fuel tank not sponsored although we wouldn't mind so call me do we have uh, clamps for the hose too huh do we have clamps for the fuel line Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah, we'll get this all uh, fit up and clamps on. I think we've got some of those constant tension clamps. Doesn't look like that holds very tight. Uh, this might be for a different size pose. Huh. He didn't seem to go any faster when he did that. Not impressed. <laughs> Sound like you had an aftermarket blow off valve on a, what was that, a six liter? That's probably six. That's just a, how it sounds. I know those six liter power strokes run a lot of boost. Alright, got the right uh, hose clamps. Yeah, don't forget to put one on that end too. But you may not need to, but you should anyway. Yep. Yeah, as long as it's below the lev level of the tank, that'll gravity fill. Did you put one on the, the petcock end or no? Mm -hmm. Because that uses a barbed fitting? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Okay. Interestingly, on that fuel pump, uh, there weren't any clamps on that from the factory. Mm -hmm. So. Do you still have to tighten those? Tighten what? These? No, the, oh, the bolts, they're down. Yeah, they're okay. Down. Weird thing about that petcock is it didn't have a lot of knurling on it, which I think is strange. It was kind of smooth, but if that becomes an issue later, we can always break out a death wheel or a Dremel or a flap disc or something and put a little texture on the knob of the second one and replace it. We don't need to fill it up because we're still in the testing phase here. Now we'll just start it up and see if it pulls fuel from the tank. Call that a success. Yeah. Well, 
So now we'll probably uh, do a little quick service on it. Or should we see if the... Uh, we should see if it moves first. Yeah. I'd hate to go through changing the oil and it not moving. Yeah, I know. I'd, I'd hate to have to waste that two quarts of $4 Walmart synthetic. That would be a shame. It would be a shame. It would be a waste. All right, well, let her rip. You know, I'm not sure that uh, I got the drive test on uh, on the record. On video? Yeah, go again. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can. A, a quickie. I did squirt a little PB blaster on that. Uh, the way she's screaming sounds like she wants a little more lube. Are you cranking that up or down? Cranking it up. Yeah, I think it's going up. Should be. It should be all the way up. Okay. Yep, success. Excellent. Looks like it rips around pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, well we're gonna get set up for an oil change. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get in and take a look at uh, That's an awesome place for an oil drain. It looks like it may have a tiny bit of water in it. So good thing we're changing it. I think I see a tiny bit of water or something coming out of it. It could be fuel. But that's not surprising seeing as how long this thing sat outside. What? Is it coming out of the oil drain? You see it? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's just uh, oil. That could just be crankcase condensation, too. Yeah, the oil it... does need to be changed. Is that going to fit on that, on that barb? The front or one side? Yeah. 
if it were me I would probably put a block under the right front wheel and then the block under the right rear wheel Yeah. Jack it up or anything. Using a pair of needle nose to fish that mm -hmm. hose on there. Yeah. What is that? Just a piece of like thin wall tigon tubing or something? Yeah. Apologize for the wind noise if you guys get any on the video. The breeze actually feels really good. What is the temperature? Well, ye old iPhone says it's 84 degrees, which is about 10 degrees cooler than it was a couple days ago. That's good. Does it fit? It doesn't have to be totally on there, it just has to be up over that barb a tiny bit. Yeah. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna jack up the front and just let it drain. Yep. We don't have one of those Forma funnels or anything, do we? Uh, I know Watch West Work likes to use those, they're pretty cool. We could use a piece of a uh, a thick aluminum foil. If I wanted to, I could use a piece of cardboard. But this will work fine. Keep on cruising. I don't want to jack it up too much because all the oil will then run to the. Well, you, you sure we're uh, we got the pan good enough underneath there? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, right, there's some water in there. And look, there goes the sludge. Not sludge, but. Yeah, a little milky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely had some water in it. And we'll also change the fluid on the hydrostatic drives too. Is that hydraulic fluid? No, it just takes regular, um, I think it's regular transmission fluid. Do you have any of that? Mm-hmm. No? Well, that's going to take a while from the looks of it. Most of it's going in the pan, that's good. Don't worry, Greta, we'll clean up the mess. Maybe. And we'll get to get oil all over the other side when we yank that filter off. Huh? So we'll uh, get to get oil all over the other side when we yank that filter off. Yeah. But next time I go to change the oil, I'll get a tube that fits over that. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah. Not optimal. Mm -mm. Well, looks like that's going to run for a while, so we'll bring you back. All right, there's our filter down there. Replacement. It's fairly heavy for its size. I dig it. compare. Yep, same thing. Well, yep, looks pretty similar. The o-ring come off with that? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got a little oil, gonna put it on our o-ring here so we don't go in dry. If this were going in upright, I would probably pre-fill it. Yes, but since it's a sideways filter, yeah. it'll automatically fill the filter. Don't break out the one inch torque wrench on this. Just uh, you know, put it on there hand tight. Give it a good, uh, and that should be enough. Makes life easier when you're going to change. Yeah, it's good enough for the woman we date. Did you uh, tighten up the drain? Yeah, straight it back in. Okay. We are ready. Okay, let me get an oil funnel. Picked up this combo kit at the local O'Reilly's a, a couple years back has these three different size funnels in it. They make life easy.
Alright, one cord in. I'm going to jam the dipstick back in there and see how close we are. We are just at the very tip of the dipstick. Okay. So you need just a tiny bit more. Yep. By a tiny bit, what do you think? Half a quart? Quart? Uh, I'd do a quarter. And then, if you need to add some more, we'll add the... I hate that, uh... Okay, another quarter quart, and it looks like our battery is about to die on our camera again. So what we'll do is we will finish up filling the oil, get some brake clean out and clean up our mess, and uh, we will switch cameras and bring you back. All right, well, we've got the oil all changed, air filter changed. I took it for a little rip. It gets on pretty well. So we're uh, looking at the uh, the deck and the belt system. Some of that is leaves, some of that is rust. What, what was formerly metal and is now turned into an oxide. Um, we know that the solenoid for the PTO works because we cycled that with the key on and you can hear it click. but I don't think that the mechanicals are working. So what we probably need to do is get down in here, get this cleaned up. So I can get you guys in here. One, one way to try it. Sh shouldn't we vacuum all the crap out of there first? Butt shot. Um, I can blow it out with uh, compressed air. Okay. Alright, we will get this cleaned up and bring you back. Well, looks better, but not great. We got, uh. Yeah. I wonder if that's. That was formally metal, or if it's just a coating. Hard to say. So, we're probably gonna grease this thing up, give it a quick test, and uh. Well, there's nothing really to grease. There's not? All... There's no Zerks on it anywhere? Mm mm. Those are all sealed. Oh. Yeah. So. Did you turn them by hand? I couldn't turn them by hand. I don't know if that's because the belt is too tight or. Well, we'll find out if the PTO works here in just a minute. Okay, so we went to test the PTO. The PTO engages and immediately kills the mower. So we are dealing with a frozen up deck, and I can't really say I'm too surprised about that. So, what we're going to do. Yeah, since we've got the access panel off here, we're going to first video this and make sure we know the routing of all of this belt jib jab.
Jeez, that goes way back there. Uh-huh. Now we're going to take a couple of these pulleys off and see if we can get them loosened up. All right, status update. This idler on the tensioner and this blade pulley are stuck like Chuck. So we've not been successful in getting them freed up, so we're gonna take the whole deck off. Anybody have a needle scaler they'd like to let me borrow? Jeez. Crusty, crusty. Still working on getting the deck off. It's not a a complicated process, just uh, one bar here and there, held into these brackets by a, a little cotter pin, easy enough. This part, where is it at? Backwards. A little uh, three quarter inch bolt nut. Like she got freed up. Mm -hmm. um, it took some torques, I'm not gonna lie, and uh, an application of the PB blaster. Mm -hmm. The bearing might actually be good. I think what we may have ran into, and you folks up north will know about this. I know D Boss Garage talks about it, and so does Watch West Work. It's a phenomenon called rust jacking, where rust will get into a real small space and it'll expand and it'll provide a, like a jacking motion and it'll really and can bind up two other free pieces of metal tight so so we just hit it with a big hammer so we're still trying to get this idler pulley to spin, so bring you back.